It has been a long journey towards environmental conservation for Kenya in the face of continued threats to forest and natural habitats. It is an endeavor that Environment Cabinet Secretary Judy Wahungu says that the government is committed to sustain. Speaking at a UNEA side event dubbed Forest and Life on Land, Wahungu said the government has prioritized efforts aimed at ensuring the fundamental values of forests are widely recognized, especially in the context of climate change and sustaining biodiversity. It is in our constitution that Kenya must attain 10% forest cover by 2030. We were pleased to report also at this side event that we are making good progress. Uh, in 2013, we were at 6.9 forest cover, but now we are at 7.4% forest cover, which means that more Kenyans than ever are growing trees, but also when it comes to protecting our forests, we are performing very well. Wahungu saying that Kenya is one of the few countries in the continent that has implemented a national climate change adaptation plan in a bid to respond to effects of climate change and other environmental challenges. We were one of the first countries to submit our nationally determined contributions. When you look at our nationally determined contributions, we're looking at a number of sectors. We're looking at industry where we are promoting circular economy strategies, we're looking at transport, uh, we're looking at energy, we're also looking at agriculture. And in all of these key areas, we're doing quite well. If you look at the issue of just climate change itself, again, we we're one of the first countries to have a climate change law. We have a National Climate Change Council, which is chaired by the president. And so we have made it very clear that when it comes to issues of climate change, the lead is actually in the highest office in the land. Speaking during the occasion, UN General Assembly President Miroslav Lajak says forests and oceans are critical in the sustenance of the planet's atmosphere as they regulate climate, rainfall patterns and global temperatures. When we protect a forest, we are protecting our economy, biodiversity, energy sources, food production, and fighting climate change all at the same time. That there can be no sustainable development without sustainable management of our forests. They are the lifeblood of our planet. He said forests are an integral part of the 2030 agenda and discussions must be held on recent policy developments, including the landmark adoption of the UN Strategic Plan for Forests 2030 by the UN General Assembly. The Sustainable Development Goals give us three more years to sustainably manage forests. We must act urgently to achieve this goal by 2020. Also, this year, the General Assembly adopted the first ever United Nations Strategic Plan for Forest 2017-2030. The 13th session of the United Nations Forum on Forests in May 2018 and the review of the Sustainable Development Goal 15 at the High Level Political Forum in summer 2018. These are opportunities to assess the work we have done and to see how much more we have left to do. Let us improve our forest scorecard urgently in time for these assessments. The third United Nations Environmental Assembly is set to commence on Monday. Outcomes are expected to include a political declaration on pollution linked to the Sustainable Development Goals, resolution and decisions adopted by member states to address specific dimensions of pollution, voluntary commitments by government, private sector entities and civil society organizations to clean up the planet, and the Clean Planet Pledge, a collection of individual commitments to take personal action to end pollution in all its forms. For Channel One Weekend, I'm Emily K. Buddy.